What's going on guys and welcome to Who to Sign For. Now in this series I'm giving you my recommendations on what players to sign for a specific team in career mode. Before we go on I will say that the signings you'll see aren't designed to be realistic and that the player ratings and potentials of the players may vary depending on what database you're using and how they perform for you during the season. Obviously you don't have to follow all the tips. This is really just a set of guidelines to give you a hand if you're stuck for ideas and want some suggestions on what players you could sign for a certain club. This is mainly aimed at those you're out there who may be new to the game and just need a little bit of advice. But or for those you're out there who just want a few recommendations on what players to sign for a team that you may be using in career mode this year. And in today's episode of Who to Sign For, guys, go to Turkey. Yes, Istanbul. Take over Fenerbahce, one of the iconic Turkish teams over the years in European football under charge of Jorge Jesus, the legendary Portuguese manager. So, uh, yeah, going to Istanbul uh, for today's episode here. Uh, Fenerbahce, a great team to use for a European RTG outside of the traditional top five European leagues. And as you'll see, they're a four-star team with very tough objectives. In Turkey, you got to win the domestic double. And in the Europa League you got to reach the semi-final. Now, that's a really difficult trio of objectives there for Fenerbahce. They are a four-star team. They are one of the best teams in Turkey, one of the highest rated as well. We have a £20 million budget, or around £20 million budget. But even so, tough objectives. Win a domestic double and to reach the semis of the Europa League, that's not going to be easy. Fenerbahce failed that in real life. And your group has got Olympiacos, Royal Antwerp, and the winners... Eintracht Frankfurt as well. Very tough group to get out of, let alone going all the way to the semi-final. So yeah, really tough objectives, but a great team to manage Fenerbahce. You know, a big, big history, uh, of course, in Istanbul, in uh, in Turkey. I was actually there very recently, well, back in March. Um, you know, it's uh, it's a lovely ground. you got lovely kits. I really like Fenerbahce's away kit, I must admit. But it is a team that does need a little bit of a rebuild. Now, there are a couple of decent young players at Fenerbahce. Turkey do have a couple of decent youngsters uh, coming through the ranks in the Turkish League right now. One of those is one of the three players that deals that come at the end of the year. Uh, you've got two players in their 30s, including Sosa, the uh, veteran midfielder. But I would definitely give a new contract to this guy. Uh, now, Fenerbahce's current number one is going to be a starting goalkeeper for presumably all the years you're at Fenerbahce. But you've got a really good young talent a goalkeeper in the reserves right now. His name is Ozer. Uh, he's in his early 20s, I believe. 69 overall. He's got 80 potential. I definitely would recommend giving him a new contract because, you know, 80 potential nowadays in FIFA doesn't sound that high, but for the Turkish Super League, it's actually a very good starting overall. He'll grow into be your backup goalkeeper in two or three years. I definitely would keep him as a good young Turkish talent. But for sales with Fenerbahce, now again, they're a four-star team with a £20 million budget but you'll notice that there aren't that many players you can raise an astronomical fee for. Most of the players in Fenerbahce's team, you know, obviously because they are a four-star team, are around the mid-70s overall. And the players you're going to sell are the older players, of course. You know, Philippe Novak, the left-back here. Tissaran, the centre-half, who we're going to sell to Rangers. Uh, Enna Valencia got his release clause. Matt, he's also in his 30s as well. We're not going to see much money in return for these players here. Valencia was our highest sale, I believe. He went to Norwich City for 7.8 million pounds but yet most of the sales are going to raise us around 2 million pounds 3 million pounds it's not a lot as we know in modern day footballers Philippe Nova went to Marseille and Tissarand went to Ibrox as well so we're not we're not getting much money for these players but the key ultimately the key is just making sure we can get something and get their salaries off the books what you'll notice with Fenerbahce and I noticed this with the other Turkish team I'm about to do a Huda sign for episode with coming very soon is is that the salaries of the players are really, really high. They're very, very inflated in the Turkish Super League. I'm not sure if that's for every team, but it certainly is for the two teams I use. And you'll notice, for example, for Aziz here going to PSV Eindhoven, um, you know, he's he's a he's a decent player, don't get me wrong, but you can certainly get better, and he's on 30 grand a week. It's a really high salary for someone of his ability. Because in FIFA career mode, you can put players on reasonably low wages nowadays, and it doesn't really matter just how good they are. 
you can normally negotiate an okay salary, which would be lower than what you consider realistically. We're going to sell him, though, to PSV Eindhoven and Luis Gustavo to Ajax for four and a quarter mil as well. But in terms of signings of Fenerbahce, that's, that's why you're here. I, I definitely would say with Fenerbahce, again, they don't need a major rebuild, but they do need some really decent young talent because there are a couple of youngsters here in the system, but you want to bring in a few more. And it's always nice to bring in some good young Turkish talent as well. One player I would definitely recommend is this guy right here. Now, Fenerbahce, of course, playing a three-man midfield. I do believe you always need a good anchor man in a midfield trio. And I think this guy will be a really solid pickup to replace the aging Luis Gustavo. We're going to send him to Ajax and replace him with this guy, Saleh Ozkan of FC Köln. Uh, he is a young Turkish holding midfielder. He starts off 77 rated, so he's one rating higher than Luis Gustavo now. But he's also only 23 years old and a decade younger as well. So he's the perfect replacement for the Brazilian Luis Gustavo. Very solid. Solid passer of the ball, good defensive stats. I love the high stamina and the high defensive work rate as well. And really, all round, he's pretty solid everywhere. So to replace Luis Gustavo, 10 years younger, a rating higher, and he's got 81 potential as well. Solid player to pick up as we sell Aziz here to PSV Eindhoven. But again, with Fenerbahce uh, playing a 4-3-3, I, I, I said, first of all, you got to get yourself a new anchor man. We did that. And I do recommend a new striker with Fenerbahce as well. We, of course, at the end of Valencia, you go to Caro Road. You want a striker that can bang the goals in in the Super League right from the very get-go. Doesn't need a great spirit. Can come straight in and be your top source of goals. But also someone that's young enough with good potential for the future. The guy I'd recommend, well, if you're watching my La Liga career mode right now, you'll know he does it for me every single episode. Luis Javier Suarez. Love this guy. The Colombian playing for Granada in Andalusia in Spain. His contract is not coming at the end of the year, so you can get him for under the valuation of 13 mil. We spent just 11 million to get him and this guy would absolutely tear the Super League up. He starts off 76 rated which means just go right into your first 11 as you start in striker but like Sally Oskan he's only 23 years old and he's got 83 potential as well. He's quick, he's strong, he's got good stamina, he's a great finisher, really all around this guy is fantastic. If you improve his aerial game this guy would literally be the complete forward at 6 foot 1. Tenacious young striker really really talented and I definitely have him as your number 9 to replace Enna Valencia. I also would recommend a new centre back with Fenerbahce as well uh, we sold Aziz, we sold Tissarand, we were selling our uh, ageing centre arse and I would recommend a good young talent that can come in right now and come off the bench. You've actually got a really good defence of Fenerbahce, that's what you'll notice when you take over the back four is pretty solid you've got Bright or say Samuel who now plays right back for Fenerbahce moving on from Queen's Park Rangers. You've got Kim Min Jae he's a great young South Korean talent. I'm a big admirer of him. I think he could definitely make the leap to uh, Premier League football uh, not before long. Very good young centre-half. And also the Scandinavian as well. You've got a good high-rated defence in a back line, but I would recommend a young centre-half who can either step in to the first team if required to do so, or be on the bench for the most part. And the guy I'd recommend is Danilo Doki. Big fan of this guy. I sign him in a lot of my Who to Sign for episodes because he's just an absolute bargain buy. His deals are coming at the end of the year so you can get him for around three to four mil. Sometimes, you know, that fee it means nothing to your transfer budget, you know. And whilst with Fenerbahce, you ain't got much money to work with, you can definitely part of around three to four mil. And it's 74 rated, 23 years old. He grows to 80 potential. As a backup in this team, as a third choice centre half, he's good enough to start if he needs to, but certainly coming off the bench as well. I would recommend a new left back as well, though, with Fenerbahce. When you look at the back four here, you'd probably say the left back is the area you'd want to improve most. I do feel feel the brighter say Samuel will be better faced further forward but I would keep him at right back personally and just train his defensive stats up on a defensive fullback development plan but I would recommend a new left back or two new left backs really for Fenerbahce and this is the guy I'd have as my starter Anthony Cacci of Strasbourg like a couple of a couple of the signs we made here like Suarez and Danilo Doki, you can get this guy for under the valuation. I had to spend a little bit more than that to get him. I think it was around £9 million plus a big sell-on clause in the end, but this is a really good, versatile defence player. I really like this guy because he's got a five-star weak foot, which means he's equally adept on the right-hand side as he is on the left. He's not too slow, he's not too strong, but he's, yeah, sorry, he's not too slow, he's not too weak. You know, he's six foot one. If you want, this guy could slide in as a, a centre-half in this team, or 
you can have him as a left back. Really, the choice is yours. I personally would have him as a left wing back in this team, but if you want, you can convert him to centre half. Really, again, the choice is yours. But I think starting left back in this team at 75 overall is where you get the best out of him. He's got 81 potential as well, so he grows really nicely too. And I would recommend a new backup left back for him as well. So two new left backs for Fenerbahce. Um, the guy I'd recommend comes from Besiktas, or a division rival here. You can get him for a round of value valuation of 3.4 mil. It is Yilmaz. This is a really good, young, talented Turkish left back playing for Besiktas right now. He's 71 rated, so not the highest to begin with, but definitely could be a starter if you want to maximize potential. And like Kachi, he's got 81 potential, so he grows 10 ratings as well. He's a very young kid. He's only 20 years old, but he's got a really, really bright future. High medium work rate. He's got great pace to begin with, decent stamina, good dribbler of the ball as well. And so Certainly a player I'd say in the future could be really, really solid in your Fenerbahce back four. No doubt about that. So uh, one of the final things I did was change the position of Cavecchi. Uh, again, with Fenerbahce playing a 4-3-3, this guy should be your starting right winger. That's where he would play. And um, again, just change the positions. You can put him on a development plan if you want as a left-footed right winger. And the final signing I made, or the final couple of signs I made, I should say, uh, was this guy right here. Obviously, we sold quite a few centre-halves. So it's always good to get some cover in. And signing good young Turkish talent is always nice, isn't it? Signing players that have the same nationalities the club you're managing with. Um, Kaplan is someone I'd recommend. This is a uh, young centre-half playing for Trabzon support. You can get him for around 1.5 mil, which is the valuation. He's only 66 rated, so in the first couple of seasons, you'll barely use him. But at 18 years old, he's got a long way to go. He's got 79 potential, so it grows really, really nicely. And will certainly become a really solid centre-half as the years go by in this Fenerbahce team. I love the fact he's six foot three and already has 76 strength. At 66 overall and 18 years old, this, this guy could get incredibly strong as the years go by. And six foot three is obviously a really good height as well. And I would also recommend a couple more good young Turkish talents. Uh, one is this guy playing for Armenia Bielfeld. It is Shem Ali Dogan. Uh, he is a 17 year old, 59 rated striker. So incredibly lowly rated. The benefit of that means you can get him on a really cheap deal. We spent just 600 grand to prize him away from Armenia Bielfeld and bring him to Fenerbahce. Great young talent though because he's got 82 potential. That's right, he grows 23. 23 ratings to 82 when he's peaking and in the future, he'll become your stand-in for Luis Suarez. Maybe right now, you'll barely use him with such a low overall, awful physicals and not much to write home about in the technicals either, but as the years go by, he'll grow into be your backup striker with Luis Suarez. First two or three years, you'll barely use him. You'll probably loan him out, but eventually, eventually in time, he'll become your solid backup striker for the Colombian Suarez. And the final signing I made was this guy from Sassuolo. It's, uh, it's Mert Mulder. I was trying to sell my last player on the transfer list, Borhan, uh, the Canadian goalkeeper, but nobody nobody wanted him. I tried swapping him, I tried selling him. Nobody wanted him, so in the end I said, okay, fair enough. Do you know what? You can take Sangare. Obviously, with uh, Fenerbahce, they've got Bright Osei Samuel and also Nazim Sangare as well. Sangare's an okay backup right back, to be fair. He's 71 overall, I believe, and he's in his mid to late 20s. So he's still got a couple of years before he starts to show signs of decline, but Mert Mulder is several years younger, the same in terms of starting ability, but also has 80 potential as well. So we swapped Sassuolo, one Turkish right back for theirs, and in the end we signed Mert Mulder for a decent transfer fee, very, very low rate, uh, sorry, very low transfer fee, all things considered, with um, with our current right back going the other way. And again, he comes in 71 overall, 22 years old, and what I like about him is the same what I like about Kachi as well. He's six foot two with medium high work rates. He's got some okay physical stats and if you want you can train him to center half and he'll be just as adept in the middle of the back four as opposed to on the right hand side even so Fenerbahce as you'll see was out with the old and in with the new all the players we sold are either in their late 20s or for the most part in their 30s but the young talent we signed was fantastic Ozkan, Dogan, Yilmaz uh, really good young Turkish talent Suarez and Kachi were the uh, and Danilo as well were the only players outside of Turkey uh, that we signed but when you look at the 
first 11, it really improves. Suarez now leading our line. Oscar replacing Luis Gustavo. And we've also got on the uh, on the left-hand side of our back four, Anthony Cacci. Off the bench, we've now got Danilo Doki and Yilmaz as well. And in the reserves for the future, we've got Kaplan, we've got Mulder, and we've got Dogen with super high potential as well. So we improved our first team, we improved our bench, and we improved our reserves. Improvements all around Fenerbahce, and we made the team far younger as well. The only question is, can we get those really tough objectives? Win a domestic double in Turkey and reach the semi-finals in the Europa League. Very tough indeed. Well, as per usual, we're assuming it's the end of the season. And as you can see... Well, I felt confident we'd won the league. But as you'll see at the top of the May fixtures here... We did get knocked out of our Europa League group, went into the Europa Conference League and unfortunately went all the way to the semis only to lose to the Belgian side. It was a win in the Super League and I felt very confident indeed because I was watching a simulation and we barely lost. I was, I was thinking, have we even lost a game? It came to February and I think we were still undefeated but even so we lost three times in the end but were crowned champions. We dominated the Super League in the end to win the Turkish First Division. Not a surprise though. Again, Fenerbahce are one of the strongest teams in Turkey and they got a great attack as well so that was really nice to see but the cup was a major failure though we were asked to win this as well we were knocked out in the last 16 of the Turkish Cup Trabzonspor won it in the end but that was a big failure as for the Europa League I said just getting through the group would be tough you got Olympiacos Frankfurt and Royal Antwerp very tough group there in the end we did finish in third that put us into the Europa Conference League we made it past the Romanians Cluj then we beat Roma then we beat Copenhagen as well but unfortunately lost to KAA again on penalty what could have been the Belgians beat us on the spot kicks to make it through to the final and ended up coming up short to Leon. So in the end as you'll see technically we failed three of our four objectives because when you drop into a lower European competition if you get knocked out in the group stage of the Champions League or the Europa League for example you get given a new objective for the new European competition you go into. In the end you know we were asked to reach the final of the Europa Conference League and we were one penalty shoot out away from doing that. The Europa League was always going to be a tough objective anyway, so getting through the group would have been a success in its own merit, at least I would say so, with Fenerbahce having to take out Frankfurt, Olympiacos and Royal Antwerp as well. But the Turkish league um, was the success of the four. And again, not a real surprise. I, I would say with Fenerbahce in the first season, I wouldn't worry too much about the European objective. It's going to be very, very tough to, well, make it out of the group first and foremost, but also go far enough to the semi-final as well. With Fenerbahce, if you are doing a Fenerbahce crew, and I, I recommend in the first season, just, just go for that domestic double. Don't worry too much about Europe. Go for that domestic double. In the end, if you win one of two and not both, it should be enough to keep your job, and it was for us as well. We won the Super League, we dominated. Yes, the Cup was, let's be honest here, the most embarrassing failure of the three we failed, but the league was a dominant display, and uh, that will be enough to keep your job. So as I, as I often say, if you win the league and you hit your league objective in the first season, nine times out of ten, you kept on for a new season. So there you go. Great team for an RTG, though, Fenerbahce. Istanbul, lovely city, great stadium. Sadly, it's not uh, the real stadium in the game, but a decent budget start off with around £20 million pounds a little bit of a rebuild need and some great young Turkish talents to pick up they're a really fun team to assemble a new core with as well great team to use for a non-traditional European league outside of the big five for an RTG in Europe fantastic side great strong rivalries lovely kits definitely worth giving them a go but that will end today's episode of who to sign for guys big thank you for watching really hope you have enjoyed it if you have done please do drop a like much love to you all have a fantastic day and I'll see you for the next episode of who to sign for very soon